How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? Welcome to Chalk Dirty to Me, second episode we're doing this year, um, post Masters for the RBC Heritage. Uh, wanted to do an episode last week, actually was, you know, I don't know if you could tell from the, uh, the double like flex here, but uh, was able to, you know, be uh, get a ticket to a practice round last week, which was an unbelievable experience, all jokes aside. Um, I talked about that a little bit on Inside Golf this week, gave a little kind of recap of the Masters there and uh, talked a little heritage um, towards the end of that of that pod. So focus today just on the RBC. Um, quick shout out to, you know, Rom for the for the, um, you know, W at, at Augusta played an incredible uh, four rounds, came out of the bad way. I think he was the the most deserving of the green jacket and um, good to good to see him get another major. I think he's, you know, only more to come from him. So let's not waste any time here. Uh, let's let's jump right into things. Uh, so this week, RBC Heritage elevated event. Uh, last year's per last year, speed got 1.4 million for first place this year. 3.6 million will go up top to first place. Uh, 7,100 yard course takes driver out of your hands a lot. Uh, Spieth last year gained uh, about 15 strokes ball striking. He lost two and a half putting and 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 won the tournament. It wasn't your typical Jordan Spieth uh, magic beans type of week. Uh, he was just killing the ball. Uh, tee to green and, and putter wasn't putter wasn't really uh, doing all that well, but he was able to hit enough good good golf shots to uh, win the tournament. Uh, generally speaking, this week I'm going to be targeting kind of players that are good uh, total drivers of the ball. You know, you can use total driving if you if you're a run Rick Run good member, you could use good drive percentage. I'm using actually good drive percentage. I think that that's a more telling stat this week uh at rbc you know how often are guys getting to getting to the green and regulation from the drive they're hitting uh that's kind of what i want to know this week because i don't want guys that are missing too wide uh so yeah i mean it's it's in in my opinion it's 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 one of my favorite tournaments of the of the year i go uh it's my third year in a row going um i'm, I'm heading to tomorrow's round so uh I might throw a little few first round leader bets in might might follow some uh follow some ponies but uh we'll definitely be partaking partaking in uh dfs this week um so i guess let's focus on that um i think it's a interesting week from a from a pricing standpoint i think that you have uh a little bit tougher maybe pricing than than we did last week at the masters but uh, all things considered, I still think it's tight at the top. Um, the pricing, uh, just been just kind of updated my ownership. I, I update it every night uh, from a couple of sources I use. And then I like to look at the difference between Tuesday night and Wednesday night projections. I think typically that's that kind of uh, is is the biggest delta in terms of where we want to see or how we want to see ownership trending. Uh, that's what I've noticed is the most telling anyway. A lot of times it just kind of shows you that a guy is going to come in a little higher than he's projecting or a little bit lower than he's projecting. Uh, and it's it's hard to pinpoint um, a perfect kind of time for ownership because ownership's always changing, right? People are reacting to uh, ownership that is that is being posted. So uh yeah, I mean this week as as you can as you can see I've got you know the two ownerships here, uh you know price uh and 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 the golfer here on the left. Uh I ran a little model um 
on the left here using using Rick's site. And I've got this sorted in, in order of uh, my favorite or the top model plays over the last 70 rounds. Uh, that's typically what I use for long-term form. I use like 70, 36, and 24 are typically the rounds that I like to look at. Um, that's just kind of how I've, I've done it since, since I've started looking at this. I think those are good kind of chunks of time periods to look at uh, in terms of how guys are playing. So this is more long-term, um, long-term form I was looking at, uh, but basically nothing too crazy. Um, uh, you know, I, I did a, I don't really want to go through all of this cause I don't, I, but there, yeah, it's, it's, you know, a mixture of, of kind of my normal baseline model. I put a typical, I put a little bit more, um, on approach this week. I put a little bit more, uh, I took a little bit out of off the tee and I put it into good drive percentage this week. Uh, nothing like crazy. Um, I think that, you know, uh, it, it, approach is going to be like, uh, I've been, I've been seen as kind of like, you know, something that's high correlation to success this week. It's always a high correlation to success, but good, good to kind of know that in terms of what types of players you're targeting. Uh, around the green is pretty important here. It's not overly difficult, but I will say if you're missing big, it it does become um, a little more hectic. That's the that's kind of the overarching uh, theme, I think. You don't want to miss big anywhere. You don't want to miss big off the tee. You don't want to miss big around the green um, or on approach and and have a you know shot that is out of kind of the lines of the course. There's a lot of areas you don't want to be in. Um, there's a lot of areas you don't want to be hitting shots out of. Uh, there's this co coquina shell, which is just a little bit tougher to play out of than, than, than normal sand, which is on a lot of, a lot of times the size of the course. So when you're hitting driver and you're a little wild, you might end up on that quote unquote, uh, crushed up shell, which again is a little more penal, I think, than, uh, your, your typical sand. Cause it's not as thin. Um, but yeah, that's, those are, I think the biggest things, um, in terms of, uh, the DFS board, uh, I haven't, I've, I've built about 30 lineups. I've got, I'm going to do 20 to 45 more, uh, depending on, depending on kind of how I feel with these, these other ones I got to build still. Um, but for me, I think, the guys that I'm looking at this week are, you know, as followed. Um, originally, I'm going to play one of the big two. I'm not going to play both of them. Uh, I'm scared of Scotty for some reason, like more scared of Scotty for some reason. But I see his ownership trending upward. I see Rom's ownership trending downward. I could see Rom being a big kind of rug sweep this this week. Speed as well. I envision Cantlay and Scheffler being the top chalk up up top. And I say, and I, I also say that because they're projecting it currently, and the delta from Tuesday to Wednesday uh, is is positive and 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 not necessarily a small positive. So it's definitely trending that direction. I think that that will hold true. Uh, I think from a build perspective this week, I'm going to again, I'm going to use one of these two guys, looking more like Rom. Um, if I can get another fifteen percent Rom this week, coming off a win at the Masters. Uh, I get it. I get that that's a quote unquote tiring week, but I refuse to believe John Rahm does not want to win another three point six uh, million dollars here. Um, and he's here for the kids. Right. So, uh, you know, all things to all things to consider. Um, I think once the tournament gets going, once the blood gets flowing, these guys are all killers. Uh, this purse is bigger or the first place gets more money this week than they did last week. Um some would argue this jacket is more coveted than the green jacket, um, parentheses, no one. Um, but it'd be also cool to see Rom get a little, you know, the, the, an, you know, back-to-back -back jackets, not saying that's going to happen, but he, he, he definitely wants to win. He definitely, you know, it might be tiring for him to be here, but you know, there's $3.6 million up top to first. So we can, you know, just also like an hour, it's like two and a half hours from Augusta to Hill and Head. So everybody's like fatigue, fatigue, fatigue. It's like these guys, are probably flying there in 20 minutes. Um, so I, I get it, but at that discount of an ownership, 
as much as Scheffler terrifies me, as much as I think he's out for blood this week uh, because he hit the ball so gosh darn well last week and he and he he did not put it well. I am going to I'm going to stick to kind of the the game theory up top because I think both of these guys are so good and I I don't want to split hairs between them necessarily. I'd rather just kind of take what the numbers do give me and that's what I did last week in terms of I was scared of fading, you know, the big 3 in its entirety and Rom was the guy who got squeezed the most and the guy that I ended up on a lot of. So just kind of following that in terms of, again, I think those two guys have the most win equity. I think you want one of them in your player pool. I'm going to build lineups without any of them, but uh, that is kind of how I'm looking at the top of the board. I also think Spieth is going to come in um, under-owned. You know, he came in under-owned last year off of a miscut at the Masters and won it. Um, the more you know, I talk about it, the more Spieth actually does make sense to me. I currently don't have him in my player pool. Um, maybe that's a mistake. Uh, but again, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I do really like Cantlay. He's the chalk. I'm having a tough time getting off of just is a bucket on this course. I mean, he, he's seven, three, two in four in his last four starts here, uh, with, with one missed cut. Uh, and he's hitting the ball incredibly well. It's just the type of course I, I, I envision can't like playing well. He hasn't been putting well, you know, get him back on a course that he seems to know and love. Uh, it, it makes a lot of sense to me this week. So he's kind of the chalk guy. I'm having a tough time um, stepping away from. He's also number one in my model for anybody that cares about that type of stuff. I, I do care about the model. Uh, I care about it more from like, for like identifying guys at the bottom of the board. Like I, you know, I know Patrick Cantley, John Rahm, Tony Finau, Xander Shoffley, Colin Morikawa, Jordan, Jordan Spieth, Scotty Scheffler, all like really good golfers and, and really good plays. Um, but I might look to use it more to identify a guy like Adam Hadwin, who I actually really like this week at 7,300, who's, you know, 5.93% ownership, not too chalky. Turning upward slightly, I think he'll get to 7%, give or take. Uh, but nothing that is unfathomable. I think a lot of that ownership is going to go in the seven Ks to uh, Kucher specifically and Henley specifically. And there was one other guy, uh, Poston, Poston, all who have, you know, a lot of reasons for, for that mostly course history, a combination of course history and form. But I think you just want to stay away from those, the seven K chalk. If you're going to eat chalk, I think you eat it up top um, personally uh, that's kind of my motto. I, I don't really love eating 7k chalk unless I really think it's a big misprice, which I don't see this week personally. Um, I think the biggest misprice this week is Homa for whatever that's worth. Uh, I thought he was going to come in under owned. I think he's just going to be like 17% now because I see his ownership trending upwards. He gained like nine and a half strokes ball striking here. The first time that the, the only time he played here in 2020, he lost, I think, like three and a half putting and two and a half around the green. He's a way better around the green and putter than he was when he came here in 2020. He's also just a way better player. Throw, I'm, I'm willing to throw the Masters out the window because he never plays well in big events. Uh, excuse me. He hasn't played. That's 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 unfair for me to say. He hasn't played well in majors. He's played very well in big events. He's got a few huge wins um, and he has been playing better in majors, but still needs kind of a big finish. Um, but I'm willing to write off last week uh, on a course that I think should fit him well. He's maybe playing the third or fourth best golf, uh, all things considered, you know, since the beginning of this year. So hope for him to bounce back. I'm on the fence about JT, it's a great buy spot. Obviously, he's 8,900. He's super cheap. You know, the the kind of, I guess, the plug of the week is, you know, last time he was 8,900, he won um, from, from a DFS pricing standpoint. And I get all that. I do. But I, I'm just, I'm up in the air there. He hasn't really shown anything. Last week was a course he should have uh, – played well at, and I actually thought he played well on the tough conditions too, which he's shown kind of time and time again in his career. And he was unable to put anything together. Um, I totally understand the buy low spot on JT. Um, and I'm not out on him, but I'm just not hundred percent in on him yet either. Burns is really intriguing. I mean, I, I keep, I, I, he just always seems to get squeezed. 
and he's got so much win equity. I think that's what people like. He's such a good DFS play. Like that, that's just what it comes down to most weeks because people, for whatever reason, don't like playing him. Part of that might be because he's volatile, but in DFS, you need the winner. And, you know, a lot of times he goes out on their own and, and wins a tournament. Um, so he's got big finishes on, on similar courses and it's just a potentially good kind of buy spot for him. 29th at the Masters, first at the match play, sixth at the Valspar, 35th at the players playing really good golf. So um, seems to have figured something out. Sungjae I like, but he's chalky. Not undecided on that. Tom Kim I like. I'm going to play Tom Kim, I think. He's trending kind of upwards. I could see him just being like 15% owned. Um, Fitz, similar. Seems to be trending upward, but I do like Fitz. I like, I like Fitz. Um, I don't not like Lowry, just... I think you're kind of splitting hairs like as well. Like it doesn't really look like either one of those guys is going to be too much chalkier than the other. So if you really like one of those guys, uh, you know, I think you should play them or uh, as, as you know, a lot of smart people say, play them, play them both. Uh, so uh, I really like Hatton this week. Um, not as big on, I, I get that the Gal play. He's just another guy like Burns, where he's volatile. He's a little more wild off the tee. I think similar to Burns as well. I um, mean, maybe doesn't fit this mold as uh, uh, of course um, from a stat profile perspective. But he's got a lot of really big finishes this year. Uh, Kirshner mentioned he had. He, the, you know, I heard this on his podcast that he met. Uh, he finished uh, second at Travelers. Also, of course, I think a lot of people said kind of wasn't for him. Similar to this one, so. I get, I get Sahith. I like Sahith. He's got a ton of talent, um, you know, uh, coming off a huge finish at the Masters, ton of confidence. So don't not like Sahith. Uh, Keegan, I do like as a DFS play. I think he's the big squeeze. And this just seems the type of course where if you need to hit fairways, you need to hit long irons. Kind of just seems like a Keegan course, even though he doesn't have a good, I think he's played here before twice and his best finish is like 41st, but yeah, I don't think he's got great course history. He's also playing really well. He's a, He seems to have found his putter later on in his career, um, which I don't know. He, he wasn't necessarily as good of a putter the last time he was here. If you're trying to convince yourself reasons to you know get on him, um, that might be one of them. So uh, I'm bullish on Keegan uh, for this week. Yeah, I just don't need Connors or Henley. I get both of them. They make sense. But again, I'm I'm a believer that you, you kind of stay away from 7K chalk upwards of 10%. Um, and I like sometimes I will obviously uh, give or take a little bit there. Like if there's a guy I really like. Um, Rose, for example, I hate that I'm even saying this, but like I'm probably just going to play Rose. I think he's coming in, going to come in less. He's just surrounded by a lot of chalk. And because of that, I think he's going to come in under owned. Uh, I could be huge wrong there because he's actually trending in the opposite direction. Um, but I, he's kind of the guy that I'm sticking my flag in for the seven Ks as, as a more chalky play, I guess you could say. Siwoo, really interesting to me. I don't know if I believe that ownership number. Kirk, interesting to me. But again, these guys are all on the edge and I don't like playing like a bunch of guys like that. So, uh, you know, maybe two or three of the of the Kirk, Siwoo, uh, Rose will be in the player pool. Woodland, um, Tita Green, nailing it right now. Um, he seems to play these courses that are less than driver. Well, uh, he's only got one finish here, not that great. Um, don't not like him for this course. I just don't think I'm going to get there this week. Uh, Keith, surprising that like he's so under owned. He typically gets a lot of ownership that seems to be a big delta actually from tuesday night to wednesday night so i could could see him coming in high but he's still not going to be chalky um anybody else here i don't montgomery i just feel like he could gut me this week um like i'm gonna play him and he's gonna he's gonna play like dog shit or i'm gonna not play him and he's gonna gain 10 strokes putting and find his way to the top of the leaderboard uh He's not a great, so it's like he's not a great iron player. Um, you kind of need to be a good iron player at Harbor Town, but you also need to get around the green game. And God, he's great around the green with his putter and the small greens, so if he can get on him, 
uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll get there. Uh, I do like Min Woo Lee as a bounce back candidate. Uh, I think he as a I think he's going to hit less than driver a lot. He's got this driving iron that he kills. Um, he used it at the players. I could, you know, maybe that's, a, I'm not saying he, you know, he's going to have the same finish at the players, but even if he finishes in the top 20, uh, that course I like is kind of like a comp to this. It's very, very precision. Um, a lot of precision in terms of the golf shots you need to hit. So, uh, yeah, I like him in the buyback spot. I just think he's really talented and I'm not ready to give up on him yet. I like Taylor more, but like, I don't know. I just don't know. Like he seemed like he's playing so well. This just seems like a really good spot to continue to play him at. Um, and then uh, Hoagie makes sense, but I'm not, I don't think I'm going to play him. He could be a good flat black candidate. Just, I don't know. He's he's like in terms of 20, 2023, he's gaining more pro on approach, I think, than anybody else. Is that true? Am I making that up? 2023. Hoagie. Yeah, no, I'm not making that up. Wild. So like in theory, he's I hate that I I hate that I do this sometimes because I talk myself talking and I'm like, that's a good idea. Uh okay. I mean, Hoagie makes sense to me. Fuck. Maybe I'll reconsider that. Uh anybody else just down here? Like Webb has been seem to have found a little bit in this game had when I really like um, Maverick McNeely. If you're willing to jump on basically a no form by low really makes sense to me at this course. Um, but he really hasn't shown much of anything and his finishes lately have nothing to do with uh, ball striking. So that's what concerns me. I think Fox could be a good play here. He's a great ball striker, which I like. Um, I don't think he's a great putter, but um, you know, a lot of a lot of this course is about getting to the green. Um, and if he's if he's striking his ball, I, I you know, at that ownership, I think he could he could be potential for just kind of a, a good DFS play. Um, Cam Davis. Treading lightly with Cam Davis, even though I love this course for him, and he's got the good course history. Uh, Bezaden Hoot, uh, he's sneakily playing some better golf finally, and he's a good DFS play because nobody really ever plays him, and he just tends to find his way to like a 20th or something like that, uh, even in tough field events. Kitayama, I think, is better than a lot of these guys he's priced with. Um, I mean, you could really argue Kitayama – I mean, I'm not, I mean, Kitayama last week was $400 more than Gary Woodland. Um, so, you know, interesting drop off in price and he's playing incredibly well other than, other than the masters last week. So that's just more of a talent play than it is a course fit play. Um, I like Svensson on this course. I like Sa on this course. Um, he's a, yeah, those are the big ones. Uh, anybody else? I said, did I say Griffin? If I didn't, I like him. Um, Buckley, Beck, uh, Akshay, maybe Akshay first round leader bet. Troy Merritt and Kevin Kisner kind of seem like good down in the dumps plays. I'm actually, I actually like going down there a lot. I went down there last week. Um, but I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm going to go that far down into the dumps this week because there's a lot of guys in the upper sixes, um, that I like a lot. So, that's kind of how I'm seeing the board this week. Uh, I think that, I think that, you know, the, the biggest things for me this week is you can, you can kind of, uh, you don't, not kind of, you can take on a little more chalk this week than you could at the masters. Um, the competitions are just smaller. So your product ownership, uh, doesn't necessarily need to be, um, as unique as it does in a week where you're going against 315,000 people. Uh, still the competitions, at least for the $5 are, you know, pretty big this week, 90,000 people in it. Um, but I, I think us, those are all kind of things to consider. I also like Stevens and, and Jaeger. Now that I'm looking at this, Stevens is striping the ball Jaeger. I think he's made like 14 to 16 cuts this year or something like something along those lines. 
Um, so just as an option to, to make the cut, I really like. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how I'm seeing the board. I'm trying to keep these things more short and sweet uh, going, going forward. Uh, and yeah, I mean, like good, good luck this week. Uh, I think that if I had to pick a winner, I would say, uh, I'm torn between Morikawa and Hovland. I think one of them will, one of them will win now. Um, my favorite play for what it's worth is I like Justin Sa is my favorite play and, and Homa, honestly, uh, I'm going to fade. It's looking like I'm going to fade Lowry for better or for worse. And uh, the guy that I'm playing that you shouldn't is absolutely Min Woo Lee. You will, he will sink us or bring us to the top of the leaderboard. Um, put us out of our misery quickly, um, though, if if he's if he's off. So, uh, yeah, that's 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 it for this week. Shorter episode. Um, hope you guys hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to ask me any questions. I'll be in Hilton Head, uh, you know, until Saturday, and then back to reality next week for me. So. Uh, enjoy this week and then we get a little bit of a little bit of off time before uh you know uh i'm not playing in Zurich next week or the mexico open i think i'm gonna take those weeks off and then um kind of gear myself up towards the pga championship but this is a fun week um excited for this week this is one of my favorite events of the year uh love that it's elevated um although not everybody agrees with it um and yeah let's let's uh let's try to catch a trophy fish this week There's always that period where I need to, there it is.